As a physician, I regularly take care of patients with all kinds of medical conditions like diabetes, kidney failure, heart attacks and heart failure, just to name a few. During my conversation with my patients, I often sit down and talk to them about their dietary habits. And the response I almost always get is, I eat healthy doc. Then I ask them to describe what they typically eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and other snacks. As they describe the foods that they eat, I break down the nutritional content of those foods. And by the end of our conversation, my patients are frequently surprised to find out that what they thought was healthy food may not be that healthy after all. The reason for this disconnect between what we pursue as healthy food and what is actually healthy is because our nutritional knowledge is heavily influenced by what we see and hear on TV and radio, which may not be the most accurate information. It is also influenced by what information is presented to us on the food package that we buy at the grocery store. Food packages often highlight the one or two positive aspects in a certain food, while there may be tens of other potentially unhealthy substances in that package. Another important aspect is that when we eat a tasty meal, we often do not want to believe that it is as unhealthy as it is because taste has such a big influence on our mind. In this video, we'll talk about why bad food, which is the food that causes chronic diseases, tastes so good and irresistible. To understand this, we'll need to travel back in time and see how we evolved. Let's get started. have been evolving for millions of years. Our ancestors were hunter-gatherers whose primary objective on a daily basis was to procure food for survival. Early humans probably spent most of their day trying to find food. If you think about what food was available around that time, it's hard to imagine high-calorie food randomly being present in the forest that they inhabited, as most of the foods like fruits, nuts, seeds, vegetables, were low in calories. Food was probably not available every single day back and their bodies needed to adapt to the prolonged periods of fasting. The way they did this is to store as much food as possible as fat. Occasionally, they would stumble upon high calorie food and when this happens, their bodies and brains needed a mechanism to signal to them that they need to eat a lot more of that food so that they can make enough fat stores. And the signal their bodies relied on for this is great taste. This adaptation is not unique to humans, as it is likely present in all animals and probably developed much earlier than human evolution, as it is an adaptation essential for survival, not just for humans, but for all animals. If you go to any tourist location where you can feed animals, you can see that in action. These animals that are used to high calorie foods fed by us seek those foods instead of their normal food. If you show them a can of Coca-Cola and a fruit, they would probably want that Coke. Now you take that same evolutionary adaptation and try to fit it in the modern world where there is no scarcity of food. In fact, there is abundance of food. Then how does our body and mind react? Remember, evolution is a very slow process and to develop an adaptation, it probably takes millions of years. And if that adaptation is beneficial for survival, like taste, it gets highly ingrained in our DNA. So now when we go to the grocery store and are surrounded by high calorie foods all around us, what do we choose? Obviously the high calorie, high sweet and high fat stuff. Even if something originally was not meant to be high calorie food, companies which sell it to us have to make more sales. And the best way they can make a sale is to add extra sugars and unhealthy fats as this enhances the taste. They come up with all kinds of creative ways to hide the fact that the product has unhealthy ingredients. If you take the example of added sugars, companies use terms like fruit juice concentrate, dextrose, dextran, and a lot of other terms that common people do not really understand. In fact, there's more than 30 to 40 different terms that can be used on a package in place of sugar. All these names should be read as just added sugar, as they are nothing but that. The problem is that from an evolutionary standpoint, we are supposed to choose high calorie foods so that we can save up fat for times when there is no food. But in the modern day, there is rarely a time where we do not have good access to food. So we consume high calorie foods 
in anticipation of food scarcity, which never happens. And when we do that, we deposit fat all over our bodies, which can eventually lead to development of chronic inflammatory diseases. This is reflected in the current trends in disease patterns over the past several decades. We live in a world of pandemics. When we hear the word pandemic, we immediately think about COVID, as this has occupied our minds and lives over the past several years. But there are several non-infectious disease pandemics going on all around the world, like the pandemics of diabetes, heart disease, cancer, which creep growing over time and there is no end in sight for these. The only way to tame these pandemics is to learn about healthy nutrition and lifestyle and adopt these practices so that we can reduce our risk of chronic diseases at an individual level. I am in a unique position as a medical doctor who treats patients with all kinds of chronic diseases. And every day, I see the impact of what bad nutrition and lifestyle has on our bodies. I try to teach as many people as I can, but my time is very limited. But hopefully, with this online avenue, I'm able to reach a wider audience. Stick with me, and we will go through this journey together. In my next video, I will discuss several strategies we can use to avoid unhealthy foods. Look out for that video. Cheers to a healthy life. Get your inner selfie right.